Okay, so I, I'm coming now to uh, <coughs> uh, look at uh, a scale that I think is crucial for uh, people doing personal injury evaluations to use and be familiar with, and that's the Structured Interview of Reported Symptoms, the SIRS. Uh, the SIRS is a tool that takes about uh, 30 to 45 minutes to, uh, to give. It has 172 items. Uh, the research is as sound as can be, as can be, in supporting this as a legitimate tool in picking people who are, and selecting people, identifying people who are malingerers, exaggerators, and fainters. And uh, so again, I want to I wanna stress that in uh, every personal injury evaluation that I do, I always use the SIRS. Uh, it has the best research behind it. Remarkably, the research shows that it only has a false positive rate of 2 to 3%. Uh, so it does not over-identify people who are exaggerators and malingerers, but yet it has great sensitivity as well. It was normed on people uh, that were going through disability evaluations, that were going through personal injury evaluations, that were uh, um, arguing for workman's compensation uh, benefits, and so it was normed uh, on an appropriate group for personal injury, even though it, it's used in a lot of criminal settings, a lot with a lot of criminal cases as well. Um, so uh, the surge was developed by Richard Rogers, uh, who is generally recognized as uh, the expert in terms of malingering and assessment of malingering uh, now in the world. So, to just give you a flavor of what the <coughs> the SERS is all about, uh, is um, uh, it has eight scales on the SERS. Again, with questions that go with each scale. It has eight main scales and five uh, supplemental scales. And um, the eight scales um, are, are very intriguing, and um, uh, and when you give this, you you get just a a, a a sense almost immediately of the response style of the person that you're giving a scale to. The first the first um, uh, scale uh, on the uh, on the Rogers or on the SIRS is what's called the rare symptoms scale. So a a uh, question on the scale uh, would be something like, are you bothered by strange smells wherever you go? Well, that's a, that's a strange symptom, a rare symptom. Another scale is a symptom combinations scale, because sometimes if people put symptoms in combination that don't make any sense, that don't occur in reality, that's an indication that they're not green. A question on this scale would be, do you have a need to wash your hands frequently? Is this related to any unique or special powers? Then there's the improbable or absurd symptom scale. Do you have any unusual beliefs about automobiles? Do you believe they have their own religion? Then there's the blatant scale. Uh, do you have any major problems with fighting evil forces? Then there's a subtle symptom scale. Do you have any major problems with waking up early in the morning? That's a subtle symptom. Generally, people would not recognize that as something that you know they should report. Uh, then there's a severity of symptom scale. Now, one of the questions would be, you know, do you have symptoms that are unbearable? Um, then there's a selectivity of symptom scale, uh, where they just are indiscriminate in reporting everything. Uh, and so you can kind of get a, a sense of the kinds of questions that Rogers ask to get at whether people are really reporting legitimate symptoms. And even the supplemental scales are very interesting. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, in fact, I like the supplemental scales better than anything because it basically throws people off. And if they are intentionally malingering, it becomes quite obvious when you give them the supplemental, the supplemental scales. Uh, for example, there's in the supplemental scales is the direct appraisal of honesty. A uh, question would be, do you like to keep doctors guessing about what is really going on with you? Uh, there's the defen uh, defensive, uh, defensive symptom scale. Are you sometimes too critical of other people? There's a symptom onset scale. Did your emotional problems come suddenly so that one day you were completely normal and the next day you were troubled? Um, there's the overly specified symptom scale. Do you have exactly two nightmares every evening? There's the inconsistency of symptom scale where, uh, again, this is uh, a, a place where he asked 
Uh, and this is where I get my strategy from, where he, he asks a bunch of rapid questions uh, that are standardized questions about symptoms, and then later on, 30 minutes uh, later in the interview, you ask him the same questions. And do they respond consistently, consistently from one time to, to the other? So the SIR scale is a great scale. A lot of validity and reliability behind it. Again, it doesn't overly identify. It only has a false positive rate of 2 or 3%, and it is a great scale. And I think it's a standard of practice now in criminal cases, but also in personal injury cases, that you use the SERS scale, and then you use two or three of the scales that we talked about with the MPI, and uh, you use those in combination. And they generally agree. They are highly correlated. And so you don't get discrepant opinions when you use the SIR scale and the MMPI. You usually get highly correlated results that kind of help you make your, your argument that the person is, is overly exaggerating their symptoms and maybe even malingering. So uh, this is a great scale and again I think it's a standard practice now. It's a standard practice in, in, in my practice and I think with many other psychologists that you use the SERVs because it is, uh, it's the best at this point in time as far as the research is concerned.